Hello, resistant starch. Gosh, what is that? Sounds kind of strange that it would be resistant in a starch and actually good for us, but it's very, very good for us. I am Carol Amendola Dianca, board certified nutritionist and also known as the Italian nutritionist because of my strong association with my Italian culture. So uh, resistant starch is another one of those things that has been a discoveries, I should say, not a thing, a discovery over the past uh, couple of decades that have proven, has proven to be so very beneficial for us and something we really didn't know about uh, a generation ago in the amount of detail that we know now. We've always talked about having fiber and having starch in our diet and and how we need fiber um, a couple generations ago it was called roughage you need roughage in your diet we do know that the standard american diet is sorely lacking in um, in fiber the overall recommendation is 25 to 30 grams of fiber a day and the average uh, American and the standard using the standard American diet is getting far, far less. But resistant starch, that's something a little bit different than just fiber. This is, uh, this is fiber in the form of a starch that uh, bypasses our small intestine. It is impermeable to digestion when it's in the small intestine to the stomach. And when it gets to the colon, it does some wonderful things. Uh, more than being resistant to just um, digestion in the small intestine, it is actually noted as a big benefit because of its fermentability. So fermented foods are very important for us. We really don't uh, ferment sauerkraut and have a lot of fermented foods in our diet today, but fermented foods, as we have learned, are very important for our gut biome. So what happens with resistant starch is, just similar to what its name is, it resists digestion in the small intestine and it, it stays in the colon longer and it ferments. And then in addition to fermenting, it also um, can develop vitamins and minerals and things that the body needs. So it's very, very important um, to have resistant starch in our diet today. So it's a slow activating um, type of fermentation that, that happens that's very, very good for us. Uh, produces a lot of important compounds. So uh, it's important for, for that. It's important for the fermentability. It's also important because of it keeps us satiated. When we eat high fiber foods, they digest more slowly in the, in the small and large intestine, and it keeps us satiating. And for that reason, it's known to be helpful for weight loss or weight management. So uh, it staves off hun hunger, a little more satiating, and there's some really good research about resistant starch and, um, and weight uh, management. There's also some great research about resistant starch helping to manage glucose control. So that's another very exciting discovery that we are aware of and the research is ongoing. And it's, I think it intuitively, I would say it's probably has something to do with that slow release of digestion in the, in the large colon, which helps to um, uh, manage the glucose in the bloodstream. So that's another very good good way to, um, to use resistant starch in our foods. So um, the recommendation is that we get about five grams of, uh, that we get about 15 grams, I'm sorry, of resistant starch in our diet today and 20 to 30 grams just overall in fiber. So how do we get this resistant starch in our, in our diet? Well, one way is um, beans with um, garbanzo beans, black beans, and it has been shown that the resistant starch in beans has been as effective as some medications for managing diabetes. Now I'm not prescribing and I'm not suggesting, but the research is very, very interesting on that. But if we go back to other foods that have resistant starch, one thing are rolled oats. So not the um, 
the quick cooking oats, but the rolled oats for oatmeal and for making some oatmeal muffins without sugar and eggs, of course, but uh, and to my suggestion. Um, barley also has a lot of resistant starch. White beans, cannellini beans, lentils has resistant starch. Um, white uh, pita bread seems to have resistant starch, but certainly not, not much. Beans are highest as, uh, of all. And um, high maize, high corn resistant starch is another, um, uh, another way to get this in our diet. So I hope this is helpful to you. Uh, if it has been helpful, please give it a like. Please subscribe to my channel so I will continue to send some uh, good tips after being in the nutrition uh, field for a couple of decades now. I'm very happy to be sharing this with you, some of these things I wish I would have known early on. Thanks again for joining.